we're back with another service video. Now this lovely little Batman Class 24 arrived with me back in 2002. And according to my records, her last service was in 2006. Now if I get close, you may be able to hear a bit of motor noise. which suggests the motor bearings have run dry. Everything else sounds pretty good. But I think it will be worth doing a strip down and a guide on how to get lubrication to the motor bearings. Because it's not that simple. So here we go, Batman Class 24 service video. First thing to do is to release the body and there are four screws here, here, here and here that need to be loosened off. So I'll do that and come back. So the body's off and meet the crew. They don't get out very much. Uh, what we have now is this overall metal block cover. There's the motor just in there and in order to get at the gears we have to drop the bogies. Okay, we need to undo the securing screws for the PCB and pull out the flex of the wires which allows the wires to pull through the holes so that we can drop the bogies. As you can see there is a reasonable amount of flex not too much on that one, that's what goes down these pair goes down to the motor itself but, um, we can feed that through once we begin but the main ones we want are the bogey ones first job is to release the bogey pivot screw up the top there so we have dropped the first bogey and as you can see in doing that you reveal the screws that hold that metal block on top of the motor so we can release that but the first job if you look here all the old lubricant um, it's, it's not, sometimes it dries like a wax, like a candle wax. It's not too bad, but it needs to be cleaned off and we'll put our preferred grease, which is the Hobby Lube um, gear lube in place, which will be much better for everything. So I'm gonna now clean off all this excess that you can see and get it running as smooth as we can. So another point for you, when you're doing the re-lubrication, don't forget to go down the side of the cogs of the gear chain. You see there's a bearing there, and that's the same all the way back. That needs to be lubricated as well. And for final assembly, please note that the wires go into that little slot just there at the top of the uh, tower on both sides to make sure they're correctly lined up to go back up through the body. The other points to remember to lubricate are the bearings of the top of the gear tower. There's one there and one back that side there. That again will be Label 102. Just a drop to keep everything moving easy. So I decided to release both bogies um, because we can probably get the prop shafts back in there okay. We need to release these four screws now to remove the metal part. Now as we do that the wires are going to want to pull back in so we have to make sure the bogies are offered back into their slots ready for the wires okay so I can't do this with one hand so I will undo those screws and put them aside and we'll lift off the metal block to get at the motor so this is with the block removed and as you can see the motor is fitted inside it but we do now how I can't speak we do now have access to the motor bearings now when Lubricating motor bearings, we've got one in here and one here. There's an extremely important tip. The end where the wires connect to the motor is where the brushes will be and the commutator will be. And getting oil on a commutator of a motor can spell the end of the motor. So it is absolutely imperative that we only use the merest drop of oil on this end. It's not so important this end, you can put you know, a normal little drop there, but on this end I recommend using the old needle or pin 
and just a drop of oil, tiniest little bit. I'll try and show you what I mean. So I don't know if you can see that, there is now a drop of the Labelle 102 on this needle. And I'm going to apply that to the bearing, this end. It's a two-handed job because I need to hold the flywheel over a little bit. Um, but that will just be it, that will be no more than that. I'm going to let you see what I've done there. So I've just moved that needle down there and the oil will happily track onto the bearing where it's required. This end, we can be a little bit less cautious, but we don't want too much oil floating around on the motor. Not a, not a good idea, but we can just apply a small drop in there and that will track back as well. So that is the motor lubricated. And just to emphasize, the end with the wires, which are where the brushes and the commutator are, you want the merest, tiniest little bit of oil. Just enough and not frequently. We now come to one of the most difficult processes of putting away. As you can see, I've restored the screws, put the metal block back on, and dropped the wires down so that we can get at them. Now, using your gear lube, or if you're using the white grease, that, I would recommend you put a drop on this end of the drive shaft. Now, the reason for that is you want to offer it into the motor there and you want it to stick will be a little bit sticky so that it will stay in place whilst you maneuver things further now the job in hand requires me to use two hands again I'll have to get a, tri a small tripod or something it's not terrible you will need a thin pair of tweezers line this up with the slots offer it into it and at the same time ease the wires back up towards the PCB on the other side of the metal block so that they don't snag on anything quite important so we'll go ahead and do that and uh, let you see what happens right, so there we are we've got the slack back that we had on the wires to make sure um, I haven't yet replaced the pivot screw there I have this end you don't do it up incredibly tightly you, you do it up so that you've still got your movement in your bogies and a little bit of lateral rocking movement to allow uneven track so there we go, both pivot screws are back in and I'm satisfied with the movement in the bogies. The next thing to do, very important, is just make sure that your wires are not snagged but they have enough slack to allow the full movement of the bogey to occur. You see that red one's just twitching, so I'll just check it, it's loose in the hole and we'll move to this end, do the same trick, yes it moves up and down you can feed it and we'll turn the bogey sharply that way sharply that way not a problem so now we'll coil those wires back up and put the PCB back on top and as a final test just before we put the body back on just make sure everything runs well motor sounds lots better Bert and Ernie there getting a good look around at their environment for once. And just before I replace the body we'll have one more check to make sure the wires are not snagged. They should come down vertically on top of each of the pillars each side of the bogies and uh, make sure they're not snagged on anything. Right, the loco's um, assembled again and uh, we now need to clean the wheels which will be a cotton bud on the backs don't forget for the pickups and the treads to make sure there's no dirt there and if you didn't achieve it when you had the bogies um, dropped earlier you need a small drop of lubricant on each end of the axles for the bearings to keep them running smooth so I will just do that and then we'll test her right there we go she's back on the track all cleaned and ready to go Now this little loco is going to have a um, supporting role in a future video so you won't see her running today on the main railway but she'll be ready for it now. Hope that's been of help to people. Backman class 24. I believe 
that the similar sort of service routine would apply to the Class 25 as well. Cheers for now.